Airbnb arbitrage is the easiest and most affordable way to start your Airbnb business. In this video, I am going to break down how Airbnb arbitrage works and if it's even legal to do. But first, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Hey everyone, my name is Jorge Contreras and Airbnb arbitrage has allowed me to grow my Airbnb business quickly and with ease. One of the things that keeps people from starting their Airbnb business is the belief that they have to own a ton of real estate or that they have to buy properties, but that's not true. You can actually rent properties, get permission in writing from property owners, and then launch them as a short-term rental. Airbnb arbitrage allows you to own a profitable Airbnb business without owning any real estate. Here's exactly how it works. So Airbnb arbitrage is the process where you get in contact with property owners who are advertising their properties for rent on sites like Zillow, Trulia, Hotpads, and such. And you basically get in contact with them and ask them if you can utilize their property as a short-term rental. Essentially, what you're gonna do is rent the property on a 12-month lease, and in writing, it should state, Jorge Contreras has permission to use this property as a short-term rental. The second thing that you need in the contract is, hey, Jorge Contreras has permission to change the locks on this property. And here's the thing. Typically, when you rent a property to live in, like a normal 12-month lease, it is always gonna say that you cannot rent the property to other people and you cannot change the locks because that's pretty standard. That's just how it works. However, when you speak to them about utilizing this property for your specific business model of short-term rentals, you can actually change or add verbiage to get permission in writing, basically making it legal. And the second thing is getting permission in writing, again, to change the locks, because typically in a 12-month lease agreement, the landlords wanna have access to the property. They may wanna do an inspection every quarter or every six months or every year. But we are going to change the lock to a keyless entry to allow us to automate the entrance and exit of each and every guest that comes into our property. This way, we actually don't have to meet with them in person. Here's why it makes a lot of sense to start your business with the Airbnb arbitrage model. Well, as I mentioned before, typically when you are buying a property, you have to put a large down payment, your closing costs. You still have to buy furniture, appliances, decor, pictures, and it really can add up to a big chunk of money. And the problem with that is that even the people who are in the position to buy real estate, they may be able to only do one purchase every so many years and it's going to slow down your ability to replace your nine to five. And you know, as an Airbnb entrepreneur for five years, having coached over 3000 people to begin this journey, I have found that 80 to 90% of people want to get into this business because they want to be able to replace their nine to five income with passive income from Airbnb. And if you want to replace your income, in six to 24 months, depending on how much action you take and how much capital you have, then the arbitrage model is going to allow you to scale and grow faster. Again, you don't have to buy properties, no down payments. You could just rent a property, pay the first month deposit, furnish it, and then basically launch it as a short-term rental. And I have done the math, and typically with the same amount of capital that you would buy one property, you could rent and do the arbitrage model for three to four properties. And what I've learned is that your profit is going to be virtually the same. So if you could make, say, about 2K a month a profit on a property that you purchase, well, if you had three or four subleases with the same amount of capital that you would have purchased one, then you'd be making six to 8K a month. And I would say 75% of people in the US could probably replace their nine to five income with six to 8K a month. So again, this model basically allows you to go bigger, better, faster without buying the properties. All you need to do is get permission in writing from the property owner or the manager. This way you have a sustainable and scalable business model. Because I get DMs on Instagram all the time from people that say, hey Jorge, the landlord just found out that I'm renting their property as a short-term rental and now they wanna evict me. And this happens frequently because people don't get permission in writing. They do it behind the landlord's back. And anytime you do that, it's not a matter of if you're gonna caught, it's just a matter of when. 
And not only that, but you're burning a bridge. And you don't want to burn bridges. You want to build bridges. You want to build relationships. Uh, with all of my lease agreements, I've had landlords in various occasions that have found out maybe before I did that the house next to them was renting because they have a great relationship with the neighbor. And they've told me, hey, Jorge, the neighbor's house just went for rent or they're about to put it for rent. Maybe before it goes you know, publicly for rent, do you want to check it out? Maybe you can rent that one too. I've also had landlords offer me to buy properties from them. So this is going to allow you to build a sustainable, scalable business model. I highly recommend that you are open, honest, and transparent from the very beginning so that you can grow your business and build something that's gonna last for many, many years. The next thing I wanna go over is, is it less risky or more risky to start with arbitrage versus the ownership strategy? Now, before I go into that, I do wanna clarify something. All of my students, anybody that follows me, I always say, hey, your long-term goal should be to own as much real estate as possible. Again, own as much real estate as possible. That's how you're gonna create long-term wealth. However, most people are not in the position to go and buy four or five properties right now. But many people can sublease, you know, two, three, four, five properties right now, or start with one, reinvest the cash flow and keep growing from there. And so again, own as much real estate in the long term, but to get you there, start with the subleasing model to help you grow and accelerate your capital. That's what I did. When I started my business back in 2017, I did start with properties that I already own, but what allowed me to scale and grow fast was the arbitrage model by not having to buy the properties anymore. And again, once I grew my capital from the arbitrage model, I went and I started buying a ton of real estate. And now I implement all three strategies. I arbitrage, I own, and I manage other people's Airbnbs as well. So in my experience, when someone is just getting started, it is less risky to start with the arbitrage model. Why? Anytime you're going into an investment, the less money you put up front, the less risky it is. The more money you put into something, the more risky it is. And as I explained earlier, the arbitrage model requires much less capital than purchasing. Not only that, but the other reason I feel is less risky is you can start with the arbitrage model, gain experience, get your feet wet, start learning how to start manage, automate a business, how to manage people, how to manage a team, how to build and implement a team in a system. And once you have all that experience and you have more capital, then you start buying properties, you are already a semi or a seasoned investor. And then at that point, it would be less risky. I learned that the less you know about something, the more risky it is. And the more you know about something, the less risky it is. And for, for those reasons and many others, I believe that the arbitrage model is a great way to get your feet wet, get started, get some experience, and then build from there. And typically in a lease agreement, you wanna rent the property for about 12 months. Now you could do more or less, but I feel that 12 months is a happy medium. It's a pretty standard term. And then after 12 months, you have the option to renew. If the landlord is happy and you're happy with the way everything has been going, you have a great and strong relationship, it's mutually beneficial to just renew the lease agreement and keep the business on autopilot and keep it going. If you are feeling like Airbnb is a great opportunity for you and you are excited about starting your business, make sure you hit that like button to help the Instagram algorithm and help me get this video in front of more people. I truly appreciate it. Now there is a common question that I get all the time and that question is, Jorge, if this is so profitable, why wouldn't the landlord do it themselves? And my answer is very simple. When you look at a barbershop, a nail salon, a restaurant, the people who own those businesses typically don't own the real estate in which those properties are built upon. Somebody else owns a real estate that just wants mailbox money. Now, yes, the, the same person who owns a real estate could have owned that barbershop or the nail salon or the restaurant, but they don't wanna be in a business that requires operations. Plus, they probably don't have the experience. Again, most landlords in the US own one to two properties, and most of them still have a nine to five, so they have that employee mindset. They don't have business experience. So for that same reason, they have no idea how to run a short-term rental business. If they did, the property that you're looking to rent wouldn't even be available for rent. It would have already been on Airbnb. And I'm sure from time to time, landlords do think about it and they just do it themselves. 
but 99% of the time, again, they don't have the experience. They don't know how to build a team, a system. They don't understand marketing. They don't have business or entrepreneurship experience. And that's why they don't do it themselves. They just want that mailbox money. So you just learned about Airbnb arbitrage and now starting your Airbnb business is more possible than it ever was before. And to help you take it to the next level, I wanna gift you my free ebook in the description down below to help you start your first Airbnb. With that being said, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification, like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.